Hey everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do my favourite books of 2020. This is always a really fun video to do. Looking back over the year and picking out only a small number of books out of the large number of mostly excellent books that I have uh, read is always a challenge, but I've managed it and I have picked 10 books and one standout series. I will not be talking too much in depth about the plot lines of any of these novels because frankly I've already talked about them at an earlier point. In some cases several um, people that I know, friends, have done uh, individual reviews of some of these and I've done a few individual reviews myself so I will link those individual reviews as and when they are appropriate in the description box below. In the description box below as well there will be links to, to the books on Goodreads as well. Without further delay let's get into talking about the books. The first of which is Astounding, written by Alec Navala Lee. This is the first non-fiction book I have read in a number of years. It is the last I have read this year, but I do plan to read more in 2021 because this was excellent. This is a non-fiction book about a very focused and small slice, although an important one, of science fiction history. Specifically about Astounding Magazine, published in the mostly 1960s, the main editor of whom was John W. Campbell, a well-known and often notorious figure within science fiction. The way he sort of controlled a lot of the uh, authors that he published in his magazine and the influence that he had on science fiction at the time and for a very long time afterwards was massive frankly more than i ever expected this is a very interesting and curious um book which i was very happy to read and i would recommend this if you like um science fiction history and you want to know more about how science fiction has evolved overall the second book that stood out to me this year was a memory called empire written by arcady martin this was an amazing science fiction novel which I truly loved. The inspiration for me reading this book was a friend of mine called Rachel. Her review of this was the final and indeed the main reason why I wanted to read this novel because I trust her um, reviews and her thoughts on books completely at this point. And frankly I will link her review. Suffice to say this is an excellent science fiction novel with really interesting characters excellent writing, very nuanced writing and just everything about this book was just amazing frankly. I can't buy this book enough. There will be a sequel to this set in the same world although I don't think it's directly related to this, not in a direct sense anyway, in uh, uh, 2021 in the first few months. So we, we do not have long to wait until I can read the second one which I'm greatly looking forward to. The third novel that I'm going to talk about in this video is called Hither Page, written by Kat Sebastian. This is a surprising novel for me because it is a romance novel. I have never read a romance novel in my life until this one. I will read some more in the future, although don't worry, this channel will still be more science fiction than anything else. I'm not suddenly going to turn into a romance reader. Although I will certainly read more other than when I find interesting ones because this was a truly enjoyable novel to read. The main two characters, the romance between them and the situation they find themselves in, it's just fun to read about and just genuinely nice and warm. I don't often talk about the warmth of books when uh, I talk about science fiction books. With this, this very much comes up uh, very strongly and it's just the interactions and the way they fit into the world is just really nice to read about. I'm going to keep saying the word nice about this book a lot because it just was. And I would recommend this book if you're looking for something a little bit lighter and something very cheerful and optimistic which I'm an optimist in my nature though this book worked out for me on a very obvious and quite surprisingly fundamental level. So I'll definitely read more by this author and indeed this is the first book in a series as well so there will hopefully be a second book I will be reading in this series in 2021. The 
Next book that I read um, in 2020 that really stood out to me was one that will make some people smile because that is Inversion, written by Ian M. Banks. This is indeed a culture novel, the sixth culture novel in fact, and this is an interesting novel set in a very interesting universe. I did a separate review of this novel. There are 10 culture novels in total. I have reviewed nine of them. So frankly, I don't really know what else to say about them at this point when I've talked about them so extensively. And indeed, there will be an upcoming video talking about the culture universe as a whole. Suffice to say, the culture universe is essentially humanity in the very far future that has evolved beyond what it is now, technologically and on a societal level obviously that's called that civilization is called the culture and various sort of interesting plot lines occurs in the different books this one was an interesting one because it reads very much like a fantasy novel for nearly the entire book and there are elements of the science fiction in it and it is very much um a culture novel i mean this is set at the same sort of time as some of the others roughly this is not a offshoot. I am curious how it fits in because it's subtly done and I found it really interesting and I just really enjoyed this novel. It probably may be one of my favourite novels, hence why I'm talking about it now, of the whole culture universe. So quite a considerable thing this novel was. The next book that I read in 2020 was The Haunting of Tramcar Devo 15, written by P. Jelly. Clark. This is a um, novella, so I'm very hesitant to say too much about it because it's shorter length might mean I will give away spoilers very easily if I'm not careful. This is a very much a sort of steampunk-esque world set in Egypt, unless I'm misremembering, and uh, it's set in the same world as a previous short story by Clark, and it is a short story that I loved, and this novella was equally Amazing. For the record, there will be a novel finally set within this universe in 2021. So yet another thing to look forward to in this upcoming year. Now this is set, and the purpose of it is very much a simple one, in a sense, and that is there is a tram car system in Cairo, Egypt. One of the tram cars is haunted by something, some sort of spirit, they don't know what, and there's a particular department that basically deals with hauntings and sort of supernatural goings on, you know, gins and things. And they investigate, let's say. I'll leave it at that. But this was excellently written, really enjoyable. The world that he creates in obviously this novella and the short story, and indeed, hopefully, the upcoming novel is amazing. I loved um, this novella, and indeed, I I want to read a lot more by Clark. He's a very much an up, up and coming uh, big science fiction author from what I can tell. I think a lot of people would easily agree with me there because he really has got something quite special about the way he writes and about the way he thinks about science fiction as a whole. The next book that I read was Empire of Sands, written by Tasha Sturey. This is a really interesting novel, not based on Western um, culture. This is obviously more Eastern. It is set in a very much a desert um, environment. And it starts off with two sisters in a uh, city with their uh, father. This is very much a sort of India type country. And it is a very curious situation because the one uh, sister is not quite a, a legitimate daughter due to her heritage and basically this triggers a series of events when some people come to visit they basically need one daughter for a certain uh, special sort of ceremony essentially to become part of their group to essentially be able to control essentially sort of magical spirits within this world by doing very specialised uh, dances and they need her uh, due to her bloodline to join them and basically want to use her as a tool and it's got very dark moments in it some lighter moments and the 
collection of characters is remarkable. There are some very nasty characters in the book, some good characters, and some characters that are very much grey characters that are somewhere in between, you know, little moral grey zone. This was an excellent novel, great ideas, and the world building and just the, the feel and the atmosphere of this world was frankly amazing and I loved it overall. The next book that I really enjoyed in 2020 was Sorcerer to the Crown, written by Zen Cho. Now this is set in Regency London. This is based around, unsurprisingly from the title, about the main sorcerer to the Crown of England, the main um, uh, royalty of the country, and that main sorcerer is unusually black. Now, obviously, this is Regency London. Racism is really, really strong. I mean, it's still there now, sadly enough, but it was much, much worse in them days. The fact that the, you know, the big sorcerer to the king is a black man. Oh dear me, that's not good at all, is it? To a lot of racist people. So, this presents problems. And it doesn't help when there's a situation that occurs that obviously needs the real sorcerer to help with. And some people would like him to obviously fail at this. But of course, if he fails, this presents a lot more problems for everybody else. So it's a strange situation for the real sorcerer to be in. An excellently written novel with interesting characters. An amazing world. I read the sequel to this as well, which was also excellent. There will be a third book in 2021, so yet another book to look forward to in the future. And overall, fantastic world building and an amazing book overall. I can't help thinking this very much is similar in some ways to the previous book, Empire of Sand, because they've both got amazing world building in worlds that are slightly different from what you know, but they're just fantastically well written and I would highly recommend this overall. The next novel that I read was The Star Diaries written by Stanislaw Lem. This is a science fiction short story collection about the about the same one character in all short stories who is a space adventurer and explorer and he keeps basically getting into situations and having to get himself out of them. This is his Diaries, obviously, in style of him after the fact and how he thinks he did in these encounters of which there are really varied and wild and mad adventures for the most part. They are excellently written. The humour is subtle and not so subtle in places and just excellent. And this book, basically, every short story in it I loved. There wasn't any dead duds. Uh, short stories at all. All of them made me smile and laugh and I greatly enjoyed this novel. I really did enjoy it. It made me smile the whole way through and I read several other books by Lem before this and indeed since this novel. This still stands out though because this was so blatant with the humour and just the writing and this series of adventures which was fantastic. I, truly enjoyed this book on a really significant level. The penultimate book that I read and really enjoyed in 2020 was The October Country written by Ray Bradbury. This is a short story collection. It is horror. Ray Bradbury is a very well known author within science fiction and within um, horror. He did some very curious short stories in this. Not all of them work for me personally. There are a few ones that I thought were I really didn't like at all, frankly, I'm not going to say why now because there's a lot of them, but some of them were amazing and this collection really stands out to me because this is basically a standout collection for Bradbury and just proves the point that Ray Bradbury did amazing short stories, he was known for his short stories, he wrote an awful lot of them throughout his life and he proved that he was basically an excellent writer who truly knew how to structure a story and make you get involved in a story in, re in a really major way and 
and even if the stories, which obviously not all of these did, didn't work for you, you still couldn't help admiring what he wrote and thinking that he wrote something excellent. Even if the actual plot line of an individual story didn't work, the book did definitely work for me. And Ray Bradby is just a phenomenal author overall. And finally, the last book that I really enjoyed this year is The Last Soul, written by Ryan Laveau. Now this is a curious book in how I, come, I came to read it because I got to know Ryan completely uh, in, in a different situation away from the book when I actually first got to know him at the start of the year. I did not know he had written a book until much later in the year. And obviously I thought, well, he's written a book. I wanted something a little bit different, so let's uh, read a book for a different reason. Rather than reading a book because I heard about the book from a fellow booktube or something, let's read a book because I actually know the author separately away from uh, books. I'm really glad I tried this way because this was an excellent science fiction novel. It is the debut novel of an author who I hope, I hope will do very well in the future. It is a colonisation mission uh, or basic premise where a group of people go and colonise Mars. There's a colony there, a new person arrives, strange things occur let's say and nothing is quite as it seems. There are twists and turns, excellent writing, there are humour, there are some very dark moments and there are some very interesting and novel ideas. I have read um, sort of colonisation mission sort of type books before where you have a certain idea on how they might work. This follows a few of them, definitely, but it certainly goes its own way at times and it has some very interesting and new ideas which I think are written with a certain flair and a certain passion that I think comes across really well. And I'm glad that this book was the last novel that is on this list because it's just being for a very personal reason. The standout series of the year that I'm going to talk about is unsurprising one that I did a separate review of and that is Legend of the Galactic Heroes written by Yoshiki Tanaka. Now this is a 10 book series. I'm not going to hold up all 10 books because I'll probably just drop them all frankly. All 10 novels are very much just separate sort of uh, chapters or almost like episodes of a greater um, novel really. They all hold up individually brilliantly well but of course they all lend much greater to the um, the whole, you know the sum, the parts are greater than some other parts. I said that's something completely wrong, I am aware but oh well. This series is a fantastic one, well written, amazing ideas, it is a science fiction series of which there is an anime which I will be watching over the Christmas period very very soon and suffice to say I loved this series it's a fun one it's fast to read none of the novels are more than 250 pages so this is for, for a 10 part series this is no more than two and a half thousand pages which frankly I've read trilogies that are that amount of pages so this is quite an achievement for a 10 part series well written great ideas an amazing amount of characters and I just really enjoyed this as a whole. And with that said that is actually it for all of the books that I have really enjoyed in 2020 and that really stood out to me overall. Please let me know what your favourite books are of the year. I'm always interested to hear about people's favourites and what books really stood out to them and the reasons why. Of course this might help me get into new authors and new genres myself of course. If you've read any of these or you, you think that any of these might make your favourite books of the year then again please leave a comment and we can have a conversation. All the links to all these books and all of the individual views about that I relate to any of them can be found in the description box below. With that said that is it for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.